Thanks for stopping by. If you have one of these 3018 CNC routers, you're likely to have the same problem that I have with mine, and that's that the bearings for the Z axis, the part that makes the spindle go up and down, come loose from the plastic housing. I'm going to show you how to fix that today. Let's get to it. On this side, you can see right here that the bearing is starting to come up and out of the housing that holds the spindle. It's only slightly up, and this is somewhat common on these. The bearing will vibrate up and out of the spindle housing. On the other side, you can see it's much worse. This bearing has fallen completely all the way down. Um, and if I raise the Z-axis up, you can see that the bearing comes with it, but as the machine's running, the bearing will fall down more and more. Now, on the model I have, I have a single bearing that goes from here to here on the spindle housing. Some of them have a small bearing at the top and at the bottom. So just keep that in mind. You may have two bearings on each side, whereas I only have one. Another thing I need to be aware of is I have this fancy blue deflector shield that keeps debris from flying out the sides of the router while it's running. And when the spindle is all the way to one side, you can see that that spindle housing is very close to this deflector shield. So I don't have a lot of room here, but I think I can find some screws short enough and I'll be able to make the repair that way. To be able to do this repair, I need to remove this entire assembly from the machine. It's not that big of a deal. All I need to do is disconnect this screw from the coupling nut and take these two steel rods out and this whole assembly should come off. You may have to grab a hold of the shaft to keep it from spinning. If you do, do it at the end so you don't scratch it up. These steel rods that the carriage slides back and forth on are captured in little pockets on these side brackets here. So I'm going to have to take this entire side off to be able to get the assembly off. And if your machine has limit switches, don't forget to disconnect that. Now hopefully this piece right here will just come right off. Maybe not. I have to persuade it a little bit. Looks like there was some kind of adhesive in these pockets for these shafts, but didn't take much to get it apart. Now that I got this far, I don't think I needed to take that set screw out. I think I can just keep cranking the motor until it comes off the end. I don't think that was supposed to happen. Well, I'll look for that later. Here's the piece that went flying. It's a little brass nut. And there's another nut inside here that's screwed to the housing. And this spring goes in between them. So that's, I guess, for adjusting the backlash on the screw. On some of these, the backlash assembly is captive and it won't go flying apart like it did on mine. So just be careful when you're taking that off. Now I need to get this thing off of the rest of the assembly. Looks like the backlash for the screw on the Z-axis is set up the same way. There's little screws holding the motor assembly under here. So I need to bring this all the way down. And as a bonus, it's pushing that bearing back into place. Now I need to get at these they're Allen screws on mine. Some of them, they're Phillips. 
a little easier to see it on this big one, but having these Allen screws with the little ball on the end makes it a lot easier when you have to go at something at an angle like this. Now I just have to unscrew it and at least this time the other nut will be caught here. I don't have to worry about it flying across the shop. Um, do have to worry about the wires though for my limit switches. And I'm not going to try taking that apart. Now I need to get these two pins out. Hopefully I'll be able to just push them out. So at the top, the shafts are big and at the bottom they're small, so they must come out the top. So what I'm going to attempt is use some sockets to support the housing. And then just put a punch up here and persuade them a little bit to come out. Huh, that didn't take much at all. It came right out. can't drive them all the way, but I think I can just grab my pliers at this point. And there you have it. Now I can fix this part. What I've seen some people do is they put some epoxy around the bearings at the top and bottom to hold them in place. I haven't had good luck with epoxy and plastic and I'm not a plasticologist but this plastic that this is made out of is uh, that slippery kind, whatever kind that is, I don't know. But I'm gonna try and do this mechanically. It's good solid material here so I'm gonna drill a hole and put some screws in right here. And like I said, my bearings are the full length of it. Yours might be two small ones, so you may need to put a screw at the top and the bottom. So first step is to get these bearings out. And so I just took this big old C-clamp that I have, and I'm gonna use that to press the bearings out. Since this is plastic and these bearings are loose already, you could probably just tap them out with a hammer, but it's never really a good idea to take a hammer to bearings. So I found that a 10 millimeter socket is the right size as the pusher and 15 millimeter socket should give me the clearance to push it out. Going with 17 just to be on the safe side. And there's two. I see a lot of some type of oil on the inside of this housing. That really shouldn't be there. Um, possibly it's from when they lubricated the slides for the bearings and it ran down around the side. I don't know, but these should be dry. That would have helped hold these bearings in place. But anyway, now I'm gonna drill some holes and tap them out. I'm going to be using these 832nd screws. They're 5 16 long. That should give me the clearance I need on the deflector shields. And the reason why I picked these screws is because that's what I found in the wish box. I'm not exactly sure if this is the right size bit. It's 9 64 so looks like it's close enough. And I'll just drill the holes and then tap it.
This one here is a little bit off center, but that's what happens when you're trying to do something and you have a camera in your way. Should be fine. I wiped this down as best I could. Like I said, I'm not a plasticologist, so I don't know if spraying this with brake clean is gonna ruin it or not. So I just wiped it down pretty well. And I didn't bother deburring the inside because I'm thinking that little ridge will help hold the bearings. Now I'm just gonna press them back into place. Or just stick them in with my hands. All right, let's see if these screws work. Well, I can't push it in or out. I think that's going to work. When you go to put this back together, the spring goes in there, and then this nut goes on the bottom. And you'll see it has little teeth on it. They need to interlock with the other nut. And you don't want to just stick it on there without any tension on it. You want to squeeze it a little bit to get some pressure on it for the backlash. Once those teeth interlock, there's not a lot of movement. So I'm not sure what the exact amount of pressure is that you need on there. I don't think it's really that critical. So as you're trying to get that bottom nut started, you may need to take it and spin it 180 degrees just because of the threads on the shaft But it's not too difficult to get it reset. Let's get these pins all the way down Looks like they could possibly use some set screw action, too, but I'm just gonna leave it the way it is for now Now I got to get all those little spacers and screws in and when you go to put this back on same thing as with the other assembly you need to get that spring and nut in there lined up Put your side piece back on, should be good to go. And whenever you're putting something like this back together, it's always a good idea to get all of your screws started before you tighten any of them up. That way you won't have any alignment issues later. Got it all back together, hooked it up to the computer, ran a quick test, everything's moving as it should. It's a pretty simple repair, upgrade, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it. Um, this seems to be such a common problem that if you buy one of these machines, probably a good idea to put those set screws in before you even start using it. Hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.